say for example a super type player re-raises you and you suspect he would only do so with the top 2% of starting hands or say with aces, kings or ace, king. New players to the game often figure when this player four bets they are more likely to have a big pocket pair. After all, both aces and kings are part of their range compared to the single holding of an unpaired ace-king hand. So without considering combinatorics, for this 2% range a player might presume something like this, a more even distribution of each of the possibilities. However, let's look at these hands by comparing the total combinations. Aces is 6 combos, kings obviously the same, and ace-king accounts for 16 combos we said. So we can see there are plenty more ace-king hands in this player's range than the big pairs. So out of the 28 possible combinations made up of the aces, kings and ace-kings, 16 of them come from ace-king. This means that when our opponent forebets, the majority of the time he is holding AK and not the other big pocket pairs. Here's another look at how we can use combinatorics. Say a type player raises UTG and you call on the button with a speculative 8-9 suited. The flop comes 4-8-9 all spades. Obviously quite a good flop, but our tight opponent C bets into us. How likely is he to have a flush here? How worried should we be exactly? Well since our opponent is tight and has opened UTG, let's say he opens ace-jack up, king-queen and pocket eights and up. Most of the time when you solve for problems like this you want to group villains holdings. So let's work with the pairs first. We're beating th tens through to the aces, the over pair hands. So that's six combinations of pairs remember. So that's tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces all multiplied by six. So five pairs times six combinations is thirty combinations of pairs he can have. Over cards include ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king and queen-kings. So remember we said when two cards of different rank come together there's 16 possible combinations. So that's 4 times 16 is 64 combinations of over cards. But remember that 4 combinations of these hands can be spades. That is ace-king of spades, ace-queen of spades, ace-jack of spades and queen-king of spades. So of the 64 combinations of over cards Four combos are made flushes, and 60 are hands that may or may not contain a spade. And finally, the pocket 8s or 9s villain can have. Since we hold an 8, and there's one on the table, there's exactly just one combination he can have of 8s, and the same of course for 9s. So there's two combinations of sets, and four combinations of flushes to be worried about. That's it. And we have assigned a villain 96 combinations of hands, and only 6 beat us. Presuming villain always continuation bets on this board, which generally players do on monotone boards like this, that's only around a 6% chance we're behind. Time to go for some value and also protect our hand. So in situations like this, remember, it's going to be more likely your opponent holds something other than a flush, like an overpair or a single flush drawing high card. In fact, how often would he flop a flush in this spot? Well, using the same combinations formula, we can work this out. Firstly, let's work out the number of possible flops. Remember, we never include our opponent's cards when we're working out the total number of flops, only our own known cards. Since we can't see our opponent's cards, they are considered random. But we know we have two cards in our hand that can't appear on the flop. So there's 50 cards left that can be dealt on the flop. Of course, the flop contains three cards, so... 50 times 49 times 48 over, remember the same card can't appear more than once so we're using the reduction formula, 3 times 2 times 1. So as the denominator, think of it as 3 cards are being dealt, then 2 more, then the last one. So there's 19,600 possible flops, how many contain 3 suited cards allowing a flop flush? Well, using the same method, let's calculate it. So the player needs two suited cards to flop a flush, so that would leave 11 left in the deck. 11 times 10 times 9 over 3 times 2 times 1 equals 165 flop combinations, 
where the opponent can flop a flush. We could apply this any time a player has two suited cards. So if there's 19,600 possible flops and 165 contain a single suit, 165 divided by the number of flops gives us the chance of flopping a flush, which works out to be a little less than 1 in 100, or 118 to 1 to be exact. Obviously, you won't be calculating combinations at the table, but by even just having a feel for the maths, it can help you make more informed decisions at the table. Combinations can not only help us determine the likelihood of a player holding certain types of hands, but also then use that to assess the most profitable course of action.